Recently I played guitar at a show for the band Agrip Nie at the Summer Breeze Open Air in the south of Germany and right before the show one of the worst things happened. The wireless guitar transmitter just wouldn't turn on. I struggled for about 15 minutes to get it to work again and fortunately it worked thanks to the help of about half a roll of duct tape and the misuse of a bunch of screwdrivers and other tools. Sure, I've been using this wireless system now for over 10 years on countless live shows all around the world and it has seen plenty of abuse on stage, so I guess it is safe to say that it held up relatively well and deserves to be retired now. Because honestly, I'm not looking forward to another one of these nerve-wracking moments just before the next show and not being able to turn this thing on again. What I'm also not looking forward is to pay over 200 euros for replacing just this transmitter. I was looking around for alternatives and I think I found something that could be just everything I need in a professional wireless guitar system once I'm done DIY customizing it. So let's get to it. What's happening everybody? So this Line 6 G50 system has been incredibly reliable for many many years as I said. It is completely built out of metal and has proven to take a beating over and over and over again. But for 330 euros it's not really cheap and as I said the transmitter even costs over 200 euros to replace it. The first alternative I found was the Line 6 G30, so the smaller brother to this one so to say. The whole system is under 200 euros and if I would need to replace the transmitter at some point in the future that's about 115 bucks, so that wouldn't hurt as much as with the G50. The downside is it is completely made out of plastic and I know from other guitarists that I've played in bands with that it is quite fragile and tends to crack if you happen to bump it against the floor or something. So definitely something to keep in mind since it could drive the costs up for replacements in the long run. But then again I like DIY projects and go the extra mile so I ordered this. This is the Harley Benton Airborne Pro and a bunch of cables, jack sockets and plugs. Once I'm done with everything this will give me a complete wireless system both with the straight guitar cable for my Jackson Rhodes for example as also an angled cable for let's say my PRS guitars. Altogether I paid 135 euros for the wireless system and all the parts but if you'd need only one of the cable angles you can get it as cheap as 117 euros so pretty good deal for a wireless system if you ask me. As of shooting this video you cannot buy individual transmitters for this so if it were to be replaced I'd have to buy the entire system again but at a price of 99 euros it is still cheaper than one single transmitter of the Line 6 G30 system. So on its own I think this wireless system will do a great job that's also what a friend told me from his experience who actually recommended it to me in the first place and he's a professional guitar player playing countless shows a year with his band so I think I can trust his judgment on this one. What I really don't like about this system though is that the transmitter plugs in directly into the guitar. It can dangle around and it also looks kind of ridiculous at least in my opinion. So I prefer having a cable going from the transmitter into the guitar and having the transmitter attached to the guitar strap for example. That's also a way safer place and prevents you from bumping into things than having it right down here. So my idea was to make some sort of cable adapter for this purpose and put the transmitter into this little transmitter pocket that I've been using anyway for years already and these things are really cheap. I think this one was around 20 bucks or so and it will hold for a lifetime anyway. And here's my first advice to all guitar and bass players out there and it's probably also one of the most important which will save you also a ton of money. Learn how to solder and make your own cables. Soldering is very very simple and the individual components for a high quality cable are ridiculously cheap. This for example a 6 meter Sommer cable with Neutrix silent plugs costs around 60 euros. I made it myself for about 16. 
with the exact same parts and it is the exact same quality. So since I need two of these cable adapters, I already made one to show you its purpose and I'll show you in a minute how to quickly do the other one so you can see how simple it actually is. It is pretty straightforward. Here's the socket with the locking mechanism so you can't accidentally pull it off the transmitter. One thing that could happen on the line 6G30 by the way, then this super flexible Zoma cable to the jack plug uh, with a silent switch right up here. In case I'd need to switch guitars mid-song because a string broke or whatever, I can simply pull out the cable and everything is silent. No buzzing or popping that could actually damage your amp. So very useful and that's basically it. So let's take a look at how to make it. The first step is of course to take apart all the individual components while making sure of course not to lose any of the tiny screws. Then right away you should thread those parts onto the cable that will be behind the plug since it's impossible to do that after everything is soldered and you'd have to do everything all over again. I'm speaking from experience here. After that you have to cut away the isolation to expose the copper wires which you can twist together to make them a bit more sturdy to work with. Same thing of course for both sides of the cable. Now you don't need to use such a clamp device like I do, it certainly works fine without it but it is very helpful to keep all the parts in the position you need them to and solder a bit more comfortable. I put some solder on the twisted wires first so that it is a bit easier to get a good connection to the plug later. After that you can cut down the wires to the length you'll need. Then I take the plug and do basically the same thing again and apply some solder on those spots where I'll be connecting the wires to. With some pliers I can bend the wires to shape so they fit better into the positions I need them. Now I only need to melt the pre-applied solder and the wires are solidly connected. The other side is pretty much the same, just with slightly different connection points. Even though there are many different types of plugs out there, the principle is always the same. This one in particular has tiny eyelets so I can fiddle in the wires and don't have to worry that they slide away while I try to solder them in place. Once both sides are done and you checked if you're happy with the connections, only screw everything together and you're done. This took me maybe 10 to 15 minutes in total for both cables and as I said the cost for the parts are nothing compared to if you buy a good cable in the store. Plus I doubt that there would be even a manufactured cable for exactly these purposes to buy anyway. You can buy these cables by the meter, so I got 2 meters, 1 meter for each adapter basically. You can measure the length roughly from where you put your transmitter to the socket of the guitar and that's the length you'll need. Roughly 1 meter should be more than enough. And this is as simple as it gets. There is no magic to it and in general you can't destroy your guitar with a soldering iron or so. The benefit of knowing how to solder is priceless, from making your own cables to changing out your pickup you can do everything yourself and save a bunch of money. Plus, whenever something breaks, you know how to fix it yourself. Well, that's all from me today. I hope this video was helpful to you in one way or another, or at least entertaining, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>